All right, this is the first match in Duelist level 18, and we win the coin toss and opt to go first. The opponent starts off with a maxi in the draw phase, which is totally fine by me. Probably hurt them a little bit to see the pot of duality, but we are able to get a Robina off of that, which is really good. Summon the Robina, the opponent's field doesn't light up, which means they likely have no interruption. So we're able to set up turn one, which is really good. Search for Empin, so I have two Empins in rotation now, and uh, I actually hard drew into the Unexplored Winds, which is really nice. I do play two Unexplored Winds and two Dreaming Town, and I'll explain why, maybe in a deckless video that I'll create later. But essentially, um, this setup here allows you to get into the two out of the three main Floundries spell and traps that you need, right? The only thing we're missing now is map, and we can get that next turn or even this turn if we resolve Dreaming Town. However, the opponent reveals they're on Branded and has a Shadal package, so dumping Shadal Dragon, they're able to pop Unexplored Winds. With Lubelion, they dump the Edge Imp and then bring up Mirror Jade. Mirror Jade's going to dump Albion to banish the Imp in. And then they're going to get the Fright First Search off of Edge Imp to get another Poly and another Edge Imp to hand. And then they're going to summon Edge Imp. We're going to attempt to do Dreaming Town now. And the opponent reveals the Herald of Orange Light, dumping a Tragedy for cost so it doesn't get the effect when it's sent to the graveyard. They, won't not, they will not be getting a Search to, uh, of an Ad Libitum or another Aluber. So at this point, we're in a decent position just because we do have the evenly matched. I'm probably going to use Book, Book's uh, the Mirror Jade, and then try to go into evenly. Now, because I know they have Branded in red set, if I try to call by now, they could just chain Branded in red. So I have to let this Branded in red resolve. I can't activate called by in, re in response to the Branded in red after I evenly because then it leaves two cards on field when evenly resolves, meaning the opponent would get to keep two cards as well. So I have to let the tragedy resolve. Obviously the fusion that they brought out in Quartus doesn't matter, so they just banish it. And they have the Alibur for follow-up next turn. Good thing we kept the call by though, because they reveal their face down card is a schism and we're able to banish the only Shadal card in their graveyard to prevent the schism from resolving. At this point, we know they have Alibur and one other card in hand and we're gonna be able to go into Empin uh, for a free spell and trap. And again, this is where the second Dreaming Town comes up. Um, super clutch to get the Dreaming Town here off of the Empin, the second Dreaming Town that is, because we couldn't recycle the first one just yet. And then we're going to go into Ryza here, and because the opponent maxi during our draw phase next turn, we're going to force them to draw the maxi, so a dead draw, and then they're going to obviously summon Alubur to search Branded Fusion, so the Schism is going to be shuffled back into their deck. And we do have the Dreaming Town for an interruption, so we are going to be able to search for Apex and shut down the activation of the Branded Fusion. So. With this setup, uh, we're in a pretty good spot here because we're gonna we have all four birds in rotation essentially off of this Robina. We have Stree, and then we're gonna be able to go Mpin and then Apex Avion and just yeah lock the opponent down. They see the writing on the wall and they scoop it up. From this one, for like the next eight matches, we lost all eight coin tosses in a row. Like it was absolutely nuts. But um, you know, I guess that's why we play evenly in Dark Ruler because we expect to go second a lot. And uh, I think even sometimes our opponents opted for us to go first, but yeah, losing eight coin tosses in a row is crazy. Anyways, to start this match off, the opponent reveals that they are on Runic. Pretty strong Runic opening, so they might be on pure Runic. They've already banished one of our cards, so they know that we're on Flow on Dries. And at this point, they're going to trigger uh, Fountain, draw a card, and go into another Fountain. They normal summon this card, which is interesting. This can be treated as a level 8 monster for a Synchro Material. Works very well with level 2s, obviously, so I might actually look at playing this card myself. Uh, but they do reveal that they're on Sprite, uh, Sprite Runic that is. But it looks like they are playing a heavy Runic engine with it. So they go into Chen Yang, uh, uh, off the Orochi and Huggin. And then they go into another Huggin to extend further, searching for another Fountain. Probably because, again, Fountain's not a hard once per turn. So they're able to activate another Runic card and then trigger more draws. Um, they actually mill both of our maps, which is crazy because you only it's limited to two. You only play two in the deck. But thankfully, it's not so bad because we have Toucan in hand. Um, the opponent's going to now extend further. Starter into blue, blue into jet. Summon jet. Are they going to be able to search for a starter or smashers? No, they're not. So this would probably lead me to believe that they have either starter and or smashers in hand already. Um, I can't imagine that they don't play two starter. So that's really weird. But they know that we're on Flawandry, so they're opting to go for this route. This is a pretty big overextension right on turn one they've used up a lot of resources all three of their fountains are in rotation at this point they've got a, a spell and trap negate they've got a monster negate they've got a banish on the car a banish a card on field and graveyard when a card is banished and uh chen yang and they probably have a runic card in hand with you know obviously runic runic fountain 
um, their runic cards are going to be live in their hand as well. So this is a pretty tough board to crack, but we top deck evenly matched and we have the Book of Moon for the carrot so that the carrot will not be able to negate the evenly matched. So we book the carrot, then we opt to activate duality. The opponent reveals a, yet another interruption in the Ash Blossom. So that's actually good for us because it means now our birds don't have to worry about Ash because I'm expecting that this last card in their hand is a runic card or, or Sprite Starter, so not another interruption for our turn. So I go now into the even leap. The opponent opts to keep the Chen Yang. They have no more fountains, right? And I guess maybe they only play two Huggin and they've used both. But if they wanted to bring back a fountain, they have to go into Jerry now to bring one back from the graveyard. So at this point, I'm feeling pretty confident in letting my birds go through rotation. Huge misplay here though, searching for Ryza off of uh, Eaglin. I should have definitely searched for Empin because when I tribute off the two birds and they get banished, it would normally trigger Chen Yang to banish a card on field and graveyard. But if I search for Empin, Chen Yang's in attack mode, I could have negated, or it would have been negated, the Chen Yang's effect to banish. So because of this, the only saving grace is that I'm going to be able to stack the opponent's deck, but I put the Orochi back on top, uh, but the opponent is going to still be able to banish the Ryza. And this is actually bad for me because if I was functioning off of the knowledge or the, sorry, not the knowledge, but the expectation that they have another sprite starter in hand, putting that Orochi back on top of their deck, they activate starter, bring out blue, and then they normal summon Orochi, synchro off into a synchro 10 again, right? Probably a Baron de Fleur. Um, the only saving grace again is like, because the Orochi gets normal summon, it would trigger map, but I've, my, my Ryza is out of rotation. So I could go Eaglin into Apex, but Apex would just get beat over by the synchro that they bring out, Chen Yang, right? Um, so Apex would be useless. I could try Empin um, to stall the opponent. It would force him to go into defense mode. But this was a huge misplay uh, on my part. But the opponent apparently wasn't playing two starter, I guess, which is really odd. Or they just thought that there was no way for them to win um, because the normal summon would trigger map and we had additional follow-up. So they actually just surrender. But yeah, big misplay on my part. I didn't actually catch it until going back and reviewing the footage now. All right, in this next match here, I think we go second yet again. Yep. Uh, but this is going to be another short one. The opponent starts off with two set cards. Again, a hand that is amazing to go first with. Not really the hand you want to see going second. No Dark Rulers and no Evenly Matched. But with two face downs and no major interruptions here. Maxi, we don't care about that. The opponent realized, I think, oh, full on degrees, why am I maxiing? I'm just scooping at this point. Obviously, they're two face down cards. We're not going to be able to play through what we have. So they surrender. All right, in this next matchup, I think I lost this coin toss as well, but the opponent opted for me to go first. The opening hand can be decent if we can duality into any bird, but unfortunately we top deck into nothing, but we're, we are going to take the called by. But because I was able to terraforming and duality, my opponent's green didn't light up. It means that they didn't have a hand trap like an ash blossom, but they wouldn't make me go first unless they have board breakers or hand traps. So we are able to, or we have to basically use Advent to banish Ryza, which isn't good. Now it means our Ryza is completely out of rotation because we only play one, but we have to do that in order to get the Eagle. Um, use map, reveal Eagle, banish Robina. You want to do this so that you chain block the Eagle because the Eagle search is the most important. But again, it didn't really matter because we knew the opponent was not on Ash. Unfortunately, they have the best hand trap against Flo Andres and the Impermanence. That shuts down Eagle, which completely shuts down our play. We need to keep the Robina in hand so that if they do normal summon, we can trigger map. And the, now the opponent reveals that they're on uh, live twin, most likely live twin sprite, but they are gonna be forced to normal summon here to get their live twin engine rolling. So the normal summon of Leela is gonna trigger on, uh, the map, which is gonna allow us to normal summon Robina and get another Eaglin and then Eaglin summon to get a Empin. And the reason you need Empin in this scenario is because Empin shuts down all the link monsters. So it's gonna shut down sprite elf. It's gonna shut down all the evil twin links and that's really, really strong. But the opponent, again, with Sprite, is going to be able to use Smashers, and that's exactly what they're gonna go for, to out the Empin. So Gigantic into Blue, into uh, Red, actually. So I guess they already have Jet in hand. Yes, they do. Search Smashers, and then they're probably just gonna activate Smashers. Okay, they're gonna go into Elf first to get the level twos in the graveyard. Then they're gonna Smashers, banish the Jet, and then take out Gigantic and Empin. So now their Link monsters are live. They can use Elf, bring back Leela, and then link off the two uh, live twins for the evil twin, Kisa Kill. And I'm like, okay, this is okay. They've got red in hand. They didn't opt to go for Carrot, which is good because my called by is going to be able to stop the Kisa Kill and Leela uh, evil twins from playing off each other. But they do have Carrot in hand, which is terrible. So now they have both Leela and 
Kisa kill in rotation. Then you could have argued that why didn't I just banish the Leela so they couldn't bring it back and then link off. I was waiting to actually just banish the the evil twin link monster and just leave them on like nothing essentially. But uh, yeah, this is not great because now they're just going to easily carrot negate the, uh, the called by and bring back the Kisa kill monster to draw one. Um, they can't go into Trouble Sunny because Gigantic locks them into Link 2s. They opt to just go into another Kisa kill so that they have the links in the graveyard for rotation. And with the Sprite Elf, they're going to be able to recur anything. Probably Sprite Red though during our main phase after we activate something because we have priority. They go into Starter for some reason here to bring out a Jet. Um, which is, in my opinion, a mistake. Why will not you just save the jet, uh, the uh, Starter? But I guess you have more materials on board in case you know you wanted to do something. But this this end board here is actually workable because we have the, the Dark Ruler. We don't even need Evenly. Because we have Dark Ruler and Unexplored Winds, this is going to come in super clutch in the grind game. The opponent has one card in hand. I don't know if we know it. I don't think we do, but I, I'm, not, I'm betting it's not a hand trap. So we Dark Ruler their board, which is going to shut off both L from bringing back Red and or a, a Link monster when we summon a monster. And it's going to shut off the Carrot. And it's going to shut off... Uh, Keys to kill. So it basically shuts off all of their quick effects uh, and negates, which is amazing. Unexplored wins. I do play two in the deck and drawing into this card, not having to needing to search it, is incredible for the grind game. And with this matchup, Sprite versus Floanderees, it's definitely a grind game kind of match where it's about resource management. Sprite is insane at resource management, obviously, getting a lot of level twos uh, in rotation. And Floanderees is about getting the birds in rotation. But the edge that we have is we have unexplored wins. So Unexplored Winds um, is going to help trigger off or, or tribute off the opponent's field. And that's exactly what we're going to do. So we got an Empin in rotation here and we have an Empin banished. And we have a Toucan now in rotation. So off Empin, we're banishing or sorry, tributing off the Keys to Kill monster. That's going to take, take the uh, Sunny Snitch offline. So we're not going to take damage. They're not going to gain life anymore. Um, and that's one monster off the field. Then we're going to summon Toucan, bring back Empin that was banished off of the Smashers. And then trigger unexplored wins again get the sprite elf out of here into another empin the opponent knows we're just going to beat over their last two monsters the stunny snitch is useless none of their stuff in the graveyard is live they have one card in hand they're going to draw into one card we have map unexplored wins and dreaming town in rotation we win the resource battle which means we win the match all right in this match we actually won the coin toss so maybe i didn't lose like eight in a row but i definitely lost a lot of coin tosses in uh, levels 18 and 19 before i hit 20. Unfortunately, when we do win and go first, we draw a complete brick hand. There's absolutely nothing that we can really do here. So we just have to set one and pass. The opponent reveals it on Dragon Maid. So I'm like, okay, I actually have a chance to maybe do something because if I can just draw a bird, I can play through one disruption. And even if they put up a, a stronger board, I, I have a uh, Dark Ruler. So I'm like, and, and a Duster for back row. So I'm like, I can play through disruption. They're probably gonna wanna negate the unexplored wins and i just have another one i just need to draw a bird and we play i think 10 or 11 birds and six pots right out of 35 cards remaining in the deck 34 now so like almost half the deck was any any card i could potentially draw to get my engine going and unfortunately we don't so at this point i'm like i literally can't do anything this is how the game goes sometimes i guess and so i just end up surrendering but uh yeah that was an interesting one let's get on to the next match all right, in the next match here, I think we go, uh, lose the coin toss and are back to going second. So that's okay. We actually draw the Dark Ruler and evenly match this time. So that's pretty good. And the opponent reveals that they are on Math Mac. They're going to just do the traditional Math Mac plays Albert, detach to search for circular, activate circular, dump Nebula. Was that? So yeah, they got a lot of Math Mac names in rotation now. Um, get the Super Factorial. This is the problem card for many decks if you can't stop it. And then they're going to go into the Link place here, which, you know, I think normally they would want to go for Heat Soul just to get draw power, because that with the Super Factorial going into, or with the ability to go into Laplacian is very, very strong. But uh, I don't think the opponent does that for this. Yeah, they're going to go into Lingaribo, which I guess is a safer play than Heat Soul, because this literally stops evenly match when your opponent activates a trap card, just tribute it. Um, but again, the Dark Ruler comes in super clutch in being able to negate that. So the opponent sets up a pretty strong hand. They've got Diameter in hand. They've got a lot of materials in the graveyard for the Super Factorial. They've got two additional potential interruptions. 
So a pretty decent starting board for the opponent. We draw into map, which is great. So we, we're going to start off with extravagance here. No, I don't think it prompted for an interruption. I could be wrong, but I'm like, okay, so no Ash Blossom probably. We Dark Ruler to shut the Lingaribo down. As long as the opponent doesn't have like Solemn Judgment, we are good. We activate the evenly matched and i think my opponent got a little flustered here because they're like oh let me just go into my super factorial now and i'm like why would you go into laplacian just to rip a card out of my hand i guess but they actually go into geomath mech now this card single-handedly beats floanderies we have like no way to out this really but they have to put it in the extra monster zone and their extra monster zone is taken up by cyber's wicket so they're gonna keep the geomath mech and i'm like all right, I can deal with that because it's not in the extra monster zone. Um, at this point, though, they don't know we're on Floanderese, right? I mean, I guess you can kind of guess it now that we play duality. But um, yeah, that, that was an odd play. They probably should have just let everything get banished and keep the super factorial because the follow-up play going through um, going through Laplacian was probably going to be stronger. Um, when you look at their graveyard here, like, when they super factorial and try to bring out Laplacian, we would call by one of the materials, which would force them to go into Albert. And the material that we would likely have to call by would be the Diameter. This has two effects. This would prevent them from gaining the Omni Negate effect of Diameter on the Xyz monster, but also shut down the Diameter that they brought to their hand as well. So at this point now, I'm like in an amazing position because I have map and I have unexplored wins. And this is, again, I played two unexplored wins and two Dreaming Town. If I can draw one of them, hard draw one of them, and I just have to search for the other one with Empin, I have all of my spell and traps in rotation. I am set. So this is like the ideal hand. The opponent is playing a hand trap though in Effect Veiler. So no Ash Blossom because when I played the pots, uh, it didn't trigger uh, the opponent to, to respond. But at this point, I have to make a thought because I'm like, I could let this Veiler resolve and keep my called by because I don't need the search off Eaglin because I already have Empin in my hand. So do I just let this be negated, bring the Robina back to my hand, normal summon Robina for turn, and then, you know, tribute off for Empin and do the search that way. But I'm like, no, let me go ahead and call by. And the reason I do this is because I want to search for Apex off of Eaglin. I know they have, their last card now is a Diameter. So I'm like, unexplored wins into Empin, Empin search for Trap card, and then normal summon Robina, search for whatever other small bird, and then tribute both Robina and that small bird for Apex. That gives me um, an interruption in the Apex Avion, as well as interruption off of the Dreaming Town Trap, which can search for Ryza. So with the um, uh, Street, I actually banished the Sigma, because this is another follow-up they can have next turn. If they control no monsters in the extra monster zone, while this card is in the graveyard, they can special summon it. So I get that out of there, so they don't have that extension. And now the only thing I have to worry about is them, I guess, I guess math mech equationing back the geo math mech final sigma but again we can stop that most likely because they can't special summon to the extra monster zone so and we can just negate the uh equation if they do get it so they're going to normal summon diameter here activate diameter to bring back diameter the normal summon is going to trigger map map is going to allow us to go into eaglin which is going to search the rise play and it's going to spin back a diameter and a pot of duality i believe to the top of our deck but first we're going to summon Street to banish that uh, final Sigma so that they cannot get Equation. Um, and we're actually gonna stack their deck some more first because we're putting back one of the um, Diameters and the Foolish. And then we're gonna activate Trap Card when they opt to try to move out of main phase one. And we're gonna search for Toucan. And I have to tribute this way because if I summon Toucan, I have nothing to bring back with Toucan. So it would just not resolve. So I have to tribute the Empin and the Robina, bring out the Mega Monarch, trigger the effect, stack the opponent's deck some more. They're going to draw into another diameter. Um, and they can't use anything with diameter because now there's no more uh, math mech cards in their graveyard. And we're going to trigger off our duality. We're going to banish the trap at the same time. Not that it does anything. It just flips the monster down, but it's going to get spun back anyways. But this just gets, gets the trap in the banish pile so we can bring it back with Toucan when we uh, summon Toucan. So we draw into duality. And uh, activate duality. The opponent does have the ash, so they eventually draw their ash, but it doesn't matter at this point. We're going to activate unexplored winds to put back the um, Ryza, and then just normal summon eagle. And then we're just going to go full rotation here. We have all birds in rotation, and we have the M pin. So at this point, banish M pin, tribute for M pin, M pin search for probably trap card number two. Not that we really need it, but it's totally fine. 
and then some of the other two small birds search for again it's not really relevant but the main thing is we're going to be able to bring back the ampin that we banished and then we're going to have 8100 points of damage on board between the two ampins and the apex and we have an omni negate but there's nothing in the banished or in the graveyard that could trigger an effects nothing in their hand and you can just see the overwhelming resource management of Flawandries once again coming out on top thanks to Dark Ruler and Evenly Matched. So super clutch going second card is able to win that matchup for us there. But let's get on to the next one. Alright, this might be the final match we need to win in order to hit max rank in the first stage of Duelist Cup and make it to stage 2. Opening hand is okay. We actually won this coin toss, which was nice. This was my rank up match, and I'm like, if I can win this coin toss and have an opening hand that's half decent, that would be great. So our our, our hand is actually kind of decent. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have a small bird, so we are, we are going to be forced to use uh, Advent to banish our Apex, which means our Apex is going to be out of rotation. But because we have both map and unexplored wins, again, playing those two copies of unexplored wins and or map helps to make sure that we can extend in the grind game a little bit so we have to use advent like i said to bring eagle and banish the robina so we can chain block robina the opponent didn't uh trigger anything on their field when we activated terraforming or advent so i was fairly certain that they didn't have an ash blossom um but they do have the best trap card against flow and reese and imperm i cannot call by the grave that so unfortunately um the eagle is negated, which means we can't get the empin. So we have to save our Robina because if they end up normal summoning, our map follow up is the only interruption we have now on their turn. I mean, I guess technically we have the call by two, but interruption for our engine. And they reveal they're on Sword Soul. Normal summon Mo Ye is the ultimate savior for me because that's going to trigger map, which is going to allow me to go full rotation before they can synchro. So I'm going to Robina into Eagle. Eagle into Empin, double, or not double tribute, sorry, tribute their token and Empin, or sorry, their <laughs> tribute their token and an Eagle for the Empin. And this takes them off of the synchro play, bring the Eagle back to hand and bring Dreaming Town to my hand as well. Unfortunately, the opponent hard drew a Long Young, able to ditch the Moye, the second Moye, bring another token, and they're gonna go into Chi Sao. So they're gonna be able to get extension here, but I'm like, all right, saving grace, they can't do anything with. Uh, Long Yang. Smartly, the opponent, you know, uses Moye to draw. I'm not going to bother negating that. And then uh, they have the Sword Soul Grandmaster Chi Sao to dump Blackout, which gives them a token. So that is going to allow them to extend with the Long Yang into a Synchro 10, which they go into Baron. Baron effect. Well, first Long Yang burn for 12. Baron effect to pop the um, M pin, and everything has to be in defense mode, which is nice. So that's good. They opt to bring out a Protoss. So the opponent's hand was absolutely stacked in my opinion. Protoss is going to destroy the uh, Robina. But again, Protoss stops special summon monsters and we normal summon. So yet another positive for Full Wanderies. We draw into a Brick technically because Evenly Mash is not going to be good right now. The opponent has two cards in hand. We still have map on field. Baron still has its negate. This is what I was thinking. The opponent has to negate map. If they let me dump for map, I'm going to be able to chain block. So they don't negate map, but they're going to let Eagle resolve. This is GG's at this point because Eagle is summoned. They can't negate Eagle because I'm going to chain block it with Robina and then chain block it with Tukin. So if they opt to Baron negate, they have to, they're only going to be able to negate the Tukin coming back to my hand. I'm still going to get my Robina and I'm still going to get my Eagle in surge. When Eagle resolves, part of Eagle's resolving effect is the summon of the, of the next monster. So they won't be able to Baron negate. Like Eagle resolving is going to be tributing Eagle and Unexplored Winds is going to activate, not even activate because it's a continuous effect, but Unexplored Winds will be used to trigger the, uh, to tribute the Baron. They cannot respond and like negate the Unexplored Winds because it's not an activated effect. So I'm going to be able to search out the M pin and then again, still resolving the chain. Use chain link one is still active. Unexplored Winds get the Baron off the field and tribute my own Eaglin. Bring out the M pin. Now, I don't know if the opponent knew this or not. A lot of people don't know this, but they, they didn't have a chance to use their Baron negate. If they didn't negate map and they didn't negate the Tukin on, on the on chain link three, that's that's it. Like they're not gonna be able to Baron negate before we're able to tribute off. And from here, um I, I think I messed up a little bit because yeah, I was supposed to normal summon Stree, banish Tukin, oh sorry, banish uh Mpin, and then use the Tukin to bring the Mpin back, double tribute again, bring out another Mpin. But instead, I just use the one M pin and attack into the Protoss and banish my token. So 
I didn't realize that. I'm like, I lost my train of thought for some reason, but that's what I should have done. Um, but because I didn't, I just have to end with this end board, which is weaker. But I mean, look at the resource management. The opponent has virtually no follow up. They're forced to normal summon again. We're going to Eagle, Eagle effect, bring Toucan. And then I think we search Ryza. Yeah, and we're just going to stack the Taya and the Protoss on top of their deck for dead draws. And at this point, we have total control of the match. The opponent is going to scoop. And that is our final match to level 20. All right, hopefully you enjoyed those matches in our run to the second stage of Duelist Cup in March 2023. Again, we went on an 8-1 and one run uh, in Duelist levels 18 and 19 using Flow on uh, If you're interested in a full deck list video, let me know, but this is kind of the deck as is. Uh, I can explain some of my choices. You've obviously seen now how the deck plays. But yeah, let me know in the comments if you want me to make an in-depth deck video. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. Thank you again for watching. If you've made it this far, Quantum is out.